What's up, you guys? Welcome to Discount Final Girl. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you're having a lovely day. If you are new here, my name is Jess, and I like to talk about movies that make you want to sleep with the lights on. With the recent release of Ty West's horror movie X and the not so more recent release of Rose Glass's directorial debut Saint Maud, I thought what a better time to talk about my top 10 favorite A24 horror movies. If you didn't know, A24 is an independent production company that specializes in film and TV production and film distribution. They have gathered quite the fan base over the past few years and I will happily admit that I am part of that. Of course, no production company is going to release tens across the board in any category that's just not realistic, and we can happily admit that A24 has some bangers and they have some duds. But I will say, in my opinion, I think that horror thriller is their strongest genre. A24 is a little bit controversial in the horror community just due to their tendency to produce more elevated horror. I hate that term, we all hate that term, but I didn't know what else to say. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But the unsettling atmosphere that they're able to create and maintain just can't be argued with. But today, I wanted to take you through my top 10 favorite horror movies from A24. So we'll start at 10 and work our way down to number one, which will be my favorite. And yes, you could argue that some of these are more thriller than horror, but it's my list. I can do what I want. One more quick disclaimer, this is my list. Please be respectful of my opinions. I shouldn't have to say that over and over again, but you guys know the drill, yada yada yada. Let's get into it. Number 10, Under the Skin. Under the Skin is a 2013 film directed by Jonathan Glazer and is loosely based on the 2000 novel by Michael Faber. It stars Charlotte Johansson as a mysterious young woman who seduces lonely men in the evening hours in Scotland. However, events lead her to begin a process of self-discovery. I will admit the first time I ever sat down to watch this movie, I absolutely hated it. I thought it was just a bunch of pretentious nonsense, and I was quite fed up with it, honestly. But I found myself thinking about it over and over and over, to the point where I was doing Google searches, I was on Reddit threads trying to figure out if anybody else had an idea of what that ending was supposed to mean. And it was through doing this research that I discovered something about myself. I like an ambiguous ending, when it is done correctly. A lot of the feedback that A24 gets is that a lot of their movies are more open-ended than not. You kind of have to come to the conclusion yourself on how you think that movie ended. And while that is frustrating for some, and in certain cases it's frustrating for me, in this case I really liked it. After doing my own research and having these theories in my head, I sat down to watch it for the second time and it was much more enjoyable. I think Scarlett Johansson is great in this role. It's really one of her underrated performances in my opinion, and I would recommend this to anybody who is okay with more of an ambiguous ending. Number nine is Saint Maud. Saint Maud is a 2019 psychological horror film written and directed by Rose Glass in her feature directorial debut. The story follows hospice nurse Maud, a recent convert to Roman Catholicism who becomes obsessed with a former dancer in her care, believing she must save her soul by any means necessary. For a directorial debut, Saint Maud is incredibly impressive. It was frustrating that the hype around this movie kind of built and built and built, and then the movie was pushed back due to the pandemic, and that was frustrating, and of course, you know, it suffered from that in the end. The hype just got too real. I finally sat down and watched this movie, and of course, you know, I was a little let down. But it is a very well-directed religious horror movie that examines the effect of extreme religious devotion on the mentally unstable, and that's a horrifying concept in and of itself, to be honest. <laughs> Again, the acting is top-notch, and Saint Maud has one of the most effective ending shots that I've seen in a movie in a really long time. Number eight is Enemy. Enemy is a 2013 psychological drama film directed by Denise Villeneuve. The film stars Jake Gyllenhaal in a dual role as two men who are physically identical but different in personality. If I tried to sit here and explain to you what this movie was about, I would feel miserably, so I apologize in advance. <laughs> but I can safely say that this movie will pull the rug out from underneath you and leave you staring slack-jawed at the screen, because that is exactly what happened to me. This is the movie that started my love affair for absolutely anything and everything that Denise Villeneuve has directed. I think that man is a genius. But Jake Gyllenhaal's performance is what makes this movie so effective for me. Enemy is unfortunately another movie with a more ambiguous ending, 
but if you watch the movie and find yourself wanting to know more, Chris Stuckman does an amazing job explaining Easter eggs and hints and talks about his theory as to what he thinks the ending means and represents. I'll link that video in the description box if you're interested to watch, I think it's really cool. But one more note, Denise actually had the whole cast sign an NDA forbidding them to talk about the ending of this movie, so nobody actually knows. I absolutely love this movie and I was so surprised when I was making this list that it was this far down, but A24 has some bangers, I'm telling ya. Number 7, Midsummer. Midsummer is a 2019 folk horror film written and directed by Ari Aster. The film follows a dysfunctional couple, Danny and Christian, as they travel to Sweden with a group of friends for a midsummer festival, only to find themselves in the clutches of a Scandinavian pagan cult. I know a lot of you are surprised that this is so far down on my list, but there are movies that I just enjoy more. I think that opening scene between Danny's sister and her parents is one of the more messed up things I've seen in a horror movie in a while, and the dynamic between Danny and Christian and their relationship just felt like a complete personal attack because admit it, we have all been there. I am a massive fan of Ari Aster, especially his short film, The Strange Things About the Johnsons. Please be careful going into that one. In between that, Hereditary, and Midsummer. The man could teach a master class on how to write fucked up relationships. The visuals, of course, are absolutely stunning and Florence Pugh does an amazing job as Danny, but it just didn't bother me in the way that I wanted it to. But of course, I still think it's a triumph, and if you haven't seen Midsummer, What are you waiting for? Number 6 is Green Room. Green Room is a 2015 horror thriller written and directed by Jeremy Solner. Starring the late Anton Yelchin, the film focuses on a punk rock band who find themselves attacked by neo-Nazi skinheads after witnessing a murder at a remote club in the Pacific Northwest. If you want a true blue, heart-pounding, slasher, gore-filled A24 movie, Green Room's the one for you. Literally called Green Room due to the director's desire to film a movie in a green room, this movie is intelligent, it's a complete attack on your senses, and it is such a fun time. I was like crouched on my, you know when you like tuck your legs like underneath you and you're like bouncing like, I that was me the whole movie because when I tell you it's an attack on your senses, you are going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be yelling at your TV and that's why I love this movie so much. It's not afraid to show the viewer the complete depravity of humanity and just what a person will do and the extent they will go to to survive. It's just completely overwhelming and a claustrophobic journey following these characters when they're reduced to their animal instincts. I will admit it is a little difficult to get into in the beginning, but please push through, it is totally worth it. And it's completely terrifying to think about the fact that there are people like this in the world today. Number five is The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is a 2019 film directed and produced by Robert Eggers. It stars William Defoe and Robert Pattinson as two lighthouse keepers who descend into madness when a storm strands them on a remote island where they're stationed. I am an unapologetic Robert Eggers super fan. I would love to spend the day in this man's brain because to be able to come up with a concept like the lighthouse is so interesting to me. I just can't wrap my head around how somebody would come up with this concept and then execute a movie so beautifully like Robert Eggers did. It was shot in black and white and 35 millimeter film, which can just be a little bit too far out of the box for some people, and that's perfectly okay. But the combination between Pattinson and Defoe's acting, their chemistry, the setting, and Eggers' personal style on this film, it was just euphoric for me to watch. It's funny, it's disturbing, it's just plain weird, and I am so happy that a film like this exists and is so critically acclaimed because I want more films like this in the future. I could talk about this movie all day. It's one of my go-tos when it's thunderstorming outside. The vibes, immaculate. All right, we're getting down to it, guys. Number four is X. X is a 2022 horror slasher film written and directed by Ty West. Mia Goth, Jenna Ortega, and Brittany Snow star as some of the cast and crew who gather to make a pornographic film on an old couple's rural Texas property. I know, I spoke recently about my feelings on X. Thank you all for watching that video, by the way. But allow me to reiterate, this movie is a damn triumph and deserves all of the hype around it. Very much a true blue slasher, Ty West channels his inner Toby Hooper with X and it seriously pays off. The story is unique and twisty enough to actually capture our attention and make us care about what happens next. I feel like it's difficult to write horror characters that you actually are sad to see them die but Ty West seems to have no problem with this at all. 
Every character is so well fleshed out and is just so damn likable that you actually are sad to see them die. Please go see this one while it's still in theaters. It's such a good theater experience, but it's an even better movie. Number three is The Killing of a Sacred Deer. The Killing of a Sacred Deer is a 2017 psychological horror thriller film directed by Yorgos. It stars Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman and follows a cardiac surgeon who secretly befriends a teenage boy with a connection to his past. This movie makes me want to, like, remove my brain, set it in a bowl of lukewarm water for an hour or two, and just exist. Just saying the name The Killing of a Sacred Deer makes me, like, want to look over my shoulder because it is one of the most unsettling movies that I have ever seen. It feels like it came straight out of an alternate dimension. That's the best way that I can describe it. Barry Kogan is the creepiest mofo that I have ever laid eyes on. If you don't know who that is, go check out the latest Batman movie. I am not spoiling that for you. A lot of people are just not a fan. They think it's pretentious. While your opinion is valid, I will have to respectfully disagree. I don't know if I was just in the wrong frame of mind to watch this, but it left me feeling completely helpless, but in the best way. I loved this movie and I really respect it for how much it affected me, but I don't think I'll ever watch it again. All right, you guys, we're down to the two last movies on my list, and you probably won't be surprised about what my number one is, but number two on my list is The Witch. The Witch is a 2015 period supernatural horror film written and directed by Robert Eggers in his feature directorial debut. Set in the 1630s, it stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Ralph Ineson as members of a Puritan family who encounter forces of evil in the woods beyond their New England farm. Even though A24 is divisive, I think we can all agree that The Witch is no less than a modern classic. As a horror movie that utilizes more atmospheric elements than straight-up scares, The Witch is just another testament to the genius of Robert Eggers. It goes without saying, but Anya Taylor-Joy's performance, especially as her film debut, is just iconic. But Ralph Ennison as the patriarch is just as spellbinding. His accent and the dedication he puts to his character, especially from this time period, is just mind-blowing. Due to the smaller set, the witch really relies on these performances to carry this plotline throughout the movie and it succeeds on all levels. The ending is immensely satisfying and I find myself finding something to fall in love with every time I watch this. All right, you guys, we've made it to number one and are any of you surprised? Number one is Hereditary. Hereditary is a 2018 psychological horror film written and directed by Ari Aster in his feature directorial debut. It stars Tony Collette, Alex Wolfe, and Millie Shapiro as members of a family haunted by a mysterious presence after the death of their secretive grandmother. Hereditary is one of the scariest, if not the scariest movies that I have ever seen. I know that this is both a popular and unpopular opinion at the same time, but I can't help the way that I feel. And I think my viewing experience has a lot to do with this. I saw this late at night where me and my three other friends were the only people in the theater. And I swear to God, when the credits started rolling, we sat there, slack jawed at the screen for two minutes, and we didn't say a word. I didn't even want to drive home after watching this movie. All of our friends were like, text us when you get home, okay? Okay, text, text me when you get home. Call me when you get home. You want to talk to me like on the phone while I drive home? Let's just do that. Let's all group call, group call. Of course, we have Tony Collette to thank for giving one of the best performances of the decade throughout any genre. This one just does it for me, guys. It has absolutely everything I'm looking for in a horror movie and it just succeeds on all levels. I am very skeptical that a movie will shock me in the way that this movie shocked me and it literally took my breath away. There you have it, you guys. Those are my top 10 A24 horror films. What do you think? I would also really like to do more ranking videos. If you guys have any suggestions on like what to do next, I could do Blumhouse maybe. If you guys would like to see that, please let me know. I really love the feedback. Keep it coming. I'm learning and I'm growing and I really appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up, but if you really want to make my day, just click that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, you guys. See you next time. Stay creepy.